Hi, this is Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and this video will show you how to set up your Science Buddies Raspberry Pi kit. The first thing you'll need to do is decide where you're going to set your Raspberry Pi up. If you have a spare computer monitor, you can use the Raspberry Pi at a desk, otherwise you can connect it to your TV. Either way, you need to make sure your TV or computer monitor has an HDMI port. An HDMI port looks like this, and the end of an HDMI cable, which is included in your Raspberry Pi kit, looks like this. If your monitor or TV does not have an HDMI port, you will need to see our written FAQ for directions to connect your Raspberry Pi. See the link below this video to access the FAQ. You also need a USB keyboard and mouse which are not included in your kit. You can use a regular corded USB keyboard and mouse, a wireless keyboard and mouse, or even a keyboard with a built-in trackpad as long as it has a USB dongle. Keep in mind that if you're working at your TV in a living room, you might need a good surface to use as a mouse pad. Once you have all these things ready, you're ready to start setting up your Raspberry Pi. The first thing you'll need to do is unpack the Raspberry Pi itself. It comes in a box that looks like this. When you open the box, the Raspberry Pi comes in a special anti-static bag that protects the Raspberry Pi from static electricity. Before you handle the Raspberry Pi, you should touch a nearby large metal object to discharge any static electricity that might have built up on your body. While you generally don't have to be super concerned about static electricity damaging your Raspberry Pi, it can't hurt to be careful. Also, try to avoid activities that could generate extra static, like shuffling your socks on a carpeted floor. When you do remove the Raspberry Pi from the bag, try to handle the board by the edges, or the green parts, and avoid touching the individual metal parts on the board, as these are more susceptible to damage from static electricity. Now you're ready to put the Raspberry Pi in its case. You'll need the Raspberry Pi itself, which you just unpacked, and the clear plastic case, which should also be in your kit. Pause the video here if you need time to find the case, and remember that you can always pause or rewind the video if you get stuck or need more time to complete a step. To put the Raspberry Pi in the case, first, gently pull apart the top and bottom halves of the case. Then, look carefully at the bottom half of the case, and you will see four pins. These four pins line up with four mounting holes on the Raspberry Pi. Carefully place the Raspberry Pi into the bottom half of the case so the four mounting holes line up with the four pins and press down gently but firmly. You should hear the Raspberry Pi snap into place. Then, take the top half of the case and snap it back onto the bottom half. Notice how one side of the top part has slots in it to allow access to the Ethernet and USB ports, so the top half will only fit on facing in one direction. Press the top half down, gently but firmly, and you should hear it click into place. While the case does provide some additional protection for your Raspberry Pi, it does not make it completely drop-proof or spill-proof. Please be careful when handling it and treat it like you would any other sensitive electronic device like a cell phone or digital camera. Next, it's time to connect your USB keyboard and mouse. If you have a keyboard and mouse with separate USB cords, just plug them into any two of the four USB ports. It doesn't matter which of the four ports you use. For example, you could plug them in above each other like this, or next to each other like this, and it doesn't make a difference. If you're using a wireless keyboard and mouse with a separate USB dongle, just plug the USB dongle into any of the four USB ports. Next, you will need your Raspberry Pi's micro SD card, which comes inside a larger regular SD card adapter. You can remove the SD card from the adapter simply by pulling on it gently, and it should come right out. The micro SD card acts as a storage device for the Raspberry Pi since it does not have an internal hard drive. Now, flip your Raspberry Pi over so you can see the micro SD card slot on the bottom. Take your micro SD card and rotate it so the metal tabs are facing down. Carefully press it into the slot until you hear it click into place. This is called a push-push slot, so to eject the SD card, you press on it again and it will automatically pop out. Do not just yank the SD card directly out of the slot, as this can cause damage. Next, you will set up your Raspberry Pi to allow you to build external circuits. To do this, you will need the ribbon cable, which is a long gray flexible cable, the Pi wedge, which is a special part that allows you to connect the Raspberry Pi to a breadboard, and the breadboard, which is a rectangular piece of plastic with a grid of holes. First, take your pie wedge and the ribbon cable. Notice that there is a notch on one side of the pie wedge that should line up with a notch on the inside of one end of the ribbon cable. Line these up so that the pins on the pie wedge go into the holes on the bottom of the ribbon cable and press down firmly. 
This will connect the two together, and they should now be one piece like this. Next, take your pie wedge in the breadboard. Notice that the pie wedge has two columns of pins on it, which will straddle the gap in the middle of the breadboard. The very first pair of two pins on the pie wedge will go into the very first row of the breadboard. Line them up so that the two columns of pins straddle the middle of the breadboard, and the first set of pins goes into the very first row. It's very important to get this alignment right so that your circuits will work later. Once you have them lined up properly, press down firmly and the pins should slide all the way into the breadboard. Here's a close-up shot that shows how the pins are lined up before they're pressed into the breadboard all the way. Notice how the first pair of pins on the pie wedge is lined up with the very first row of the breadboard. Finally, connect the ribbon cable to the two rows of pins that are exposed in the side of your Raspberry Pi's case. Line the cable up so the pins will go into the holes on its bottom and press down firmly. This should connect the cable securely and your Raspberry Pi is now connected to a breadboard which will allow you to build and control external circuits. Next, you can use your HDMI cable to connect your Raspberry Pi to a TV or computer monitor. An HDMI cable looks like this and is included in your kit. Plug one end of the cable into your Raspberry Pi's HDMI port. It doesn't matter which end of the cable because both ends are the same. Plug the other end of the HDMI cable into an HDMI port on your TV or computer monitor. The HDMI cable is about 6 feet long, so keep in mind that this will affect where you can place your Raspberry Pi on your desk or near your TV. Next you will need your micro USB power cable. It has two prongs on one end that plug into a wall outlet, and a micro USB connector on the other end that plugs into the Raspberry Pi. Plug the adapter into any standard wall outlet or surge protector. The green LED on the adapter should light up to indicate that it is receiving power. If the LED doesn't light up, try a different outlet, or make sure the outlet isn't controlled by a switch. Then, plug the other end of the cable into the Raspberry Pi's micro USB port, which is located just to the left of the HDMI port. As soon as you plug the cable in, a couple things will happen. A solid red LED should turn on to indicate that the Raspberry Pi is receiving power. If this LED does not turn on, it means your power cable is not connected correctly. A second green LED should flash on and off to indicate that the Raspberry Pi is reading data from the SD card. If this LED does not flash at all, it means your SD card is not inserted properly. Next, if your TV or computer monitor is turned on and set to the right input, you should start to see text scrolling down the screen as the Raspberry Pi boots up. If your screen is blank, make sure your monitor or TV is turned on and set to the proper HDMI input that your Raspberry Pi is connected to. Ask an adult if you need help figuring this part out. If you cannot get your Raspberry Pi to boot up properly, see the link below this video for our troubleshooting page. Otherwise, you're ready to start using the Raspberry Pi's desktop. When the Raspberry Pi is done booting up, you should see a desktop environment somewhat similar to what you might be used to from Windows or Apple computers. This operating system is called Raspbian and is a special version of the free operating system Linux designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi. There are a series of desktop icons on the left edge of the screen that you can use to launch different programs by double clicking. There is also a start menu in the bottom left of the screen that you can use to launch even more programs. While you are certainly welcome to use these to explore the Raspberry Pi's capabilities, you will not need most of them to do your Science Buddies projects. Instead, for now, we just want you to practice shutting down your Raspberry Pi by double clicking on the desktop icon labeled Shutdown, and then clicking Yes in the box that pops up. Wait for your TV or monitor to go blank indicating that the Raspberry Pi has shut down completely. Then, unplug the micro USB cable and plug it back in, which will cause the Raspberry Pi to reboot. It is very important to always properly shut down the Raspberry Pi using the desktop shutdown icon before you unplug the power cable. If you unplug the power cable without properly shutting down, this can permanently corrupt the Raspberry Pi's SD card. Once you have your Raspberry Pi booted up again, you are ready to start your first Science Buddies project. You'll do this by launching the two desktop icons in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. First, double-click the icon labeled Scratch GPIO 5. This will open Scratch, the programming language you will use to write programs for your projects. Wait a few seconds for the window to open, and then click OK in the pop-up box that comes up. Then, drag Scratch off to one side of your screen. Next, double-click on the desktop icon labeled Raspberry Pi Projects Kit. 
This will open a window with the written directions for your Science Buddies Raspberry Pi projects. The Raspberry Pi is not as fast as some computers you may be used to using, so wait patiently for a few seconds for the page to load. Now you'll be brought to a home page that shows you all eight projects you can do with your Raspberry Pi kit. Scroll down to see a title, picture, and description of each project so you can decide which one you want to do first. If you don't have any experience with the Raspberry Pi, we recommend starting at the top and doing the projects in order. If you are using a widescreen TV or computer monitor, we recommend placing the written directions and the scratch window side by side so you can see both at the same time. I can do that here by dragging the written directions over to the left and then resizing the scratch window slightly so they each take up about half of the screen. Now, for example, if I click on the link for the first project, you'll be brought to a page with written directions, pictures, and videos giving you a step-by-step -step guide for exactly how to do the project, even if you're completely new to electronics and programming. Remember that the Raspberry Pi is not as fast as far more expensive computers and smartphones, so the browsing experience might seem a bit slow at times. Just be patient and wait a couple seconds for images and pages to load. Now, with the windows open side by side, when you get to a point in the directions with the Scratch program, you'll easily be able to write the program in the Scratch window without having to toggle back and forth between the two windows. This concludes your introduction to setting up your Science Buddies Raspberry Pi kit. We hope you have fun getting started with your first project.